Good morning, Spring House. As you are coming uh, this morning and bringing your dollars for those in need, welcome if you're joining us on live stream. I'd like to encourage you out in the foyer uh, are these uh, flyers, and this is the summer schedule for Spring House. We will uh, be taking a break from our uh, regular midweek gathering, and so uh, many family events listed here, some information for you. Put this on your refrigerator if you want, but these are available out in the foyer, and it will give you uh, the information you need if you want to participate in the things that are happening uh, at Springhouse this summer. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> well, we're continuing our uh, series, His Church, as Justin uh, talked about, and, uh, and I'm excited about what the Lord has uh, for us uh, today, and uh, I'm going to let everybody finish up here, get settled. Amen. Look at somebody next to you and say, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad to be here. This Friday marks five years since the passing of Pastor Margaret. And uh, some of you don't, uh, may not know Pastor Margaret. Pastor Margaret was our kids pastor here at Springhouse for uh, over two decades. And more than that, she was a very, very close friend of mine, very much like a mom uh, in my life. And um, I remember going to the celebration of life service uh, for Margaret and the kids got up and uh, spoke. And one of the, uh, one of the Arwen, when she spoke, really uh, something that she said really st- stood out to me and I've held on to. She was talking about some of the memories that she had with her mom. And she was talking about some of the, some of the bigger moments. But what she said was that the best times were actually the ordinary times, the ordinary times. And she encouraged everyone in the room to enjoy the gift of ordinary days, to enjoy the gift of ordinary, the gift of the ordinary. And I've got this, uh, this fake plant here that I got from a store a week, like a week after I saw this, and it says, enjoy the gift of ordinary, ordinary days. And that really stuck out to me. And you might be asking yourself, well, that's an interesting setup for uh, the message today. Well, today we're going to be talking about signs, wonders, and miracles. And, uh, and I wonder if by the end of this message, we might not understand that there is a miracle in leaning into the ordinary. Would you stand with me? We're going to read from Acts chapter 2. Let's read with some gusto, friends. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. And everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who are being saved. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that it is alive and active today. I thank you for every heart in this room. I pray that you would make our hearts soft and pliable for your words today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. So as I mentioned before, we're continuing in our series, uh, series, His Church. In 2013, I was uh, much. I, I was involved with the theater here at Springhouse Springhouse Theater in 2013. I was in a show called Fiddler on the Roof. Has anybody heard of Fiddler on the Roof? And um, it was an amazing time. It's an amazing show. And I had the privilege of playing the role of Model. Model uh, was a tailor, and uh, and he did not necessarily count himself worthy enough of of obtaining uh, Tevia's daughter and taking her as his wife. And so. In the show, Model has a song that he sings uh, that's a real uh, poignant song in, 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 the, in the show, and it's called Miracle of Miracles. And so anytime I hear somebody say wonders or miracles, I always get this song in my head. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to sing it today. <laughs> and if I do, you will have witnessed a miracle. Uh, 
I, uh, but in the song, in the song, uh, model describes miracles that are happening all throughout scripture. So he talks about Daniel in the lion's den. That certainly was a supernatural moment when Daniel's in lion's den and he comes out unscathed. Uh, he talks about Jericho and the walls of Jericho collapsing. He talks about Moses in the Red Sea and you know that the, the sea parted and the Israelites were able to walk through. That was a supernatural, miraculous moment. He talks about David and Goliath. Uh, and he also talks about the manna uh, in the wilderness. And he talks about how God, uh, basically where God um, supplied uh, bread for the Israelites for 40 years. All of these miraculous events. And it doesn't even t uh, scrape the iceberg of the miracles, the supernatural things we see all throughout scripture that God does. Well, Model ends the song with this. He says, but of all God's miracles, large and small, the most miraculous one of all is the one I thought could never be. God has given you to me. Have you ever wondered if miracles were subjective? Have you ever wondered if miracle, uh, you know, when one person sees it as a miracle, another one sees it as something completely different? You know, in this case, Model certainly saw his uh, being able to marry his idol as a miracle. You know, I'll tell you right now, I know me being able to marry Sherry was, uh, was definitely a miracle. I mean, I know you guys know I'm good looking and all, but I mean, man, she, that was a, that was a miracle moment, okay? And, uh, and, I'm, so, and I'm so grateful for, for God's move uh, in, my, in my life. Um, listen, a, a miracle is supernatural intervention by God. That's a simple definition, okay? A miracle is supernatural intervention by God. In my household, we have this special talent. Uh, and we, our talent is we know how to lose things. Um, we never lose the things that we don't need. We only lose the things, lose the things that we do need. You know, things that we would use day, day after day, moment by moment. So we have this talent. And, and so what happens is when we lose something, you know, instead of getting up and looking for it, we just call Sherry because Sherry has this miraculous ability to find anything that we have lost. Now, I would tell you if she was here right now, she would probably grab the microphone from me and say, Kevin, that is not a miracle. That is just from the power of sight because she actually gets up and looks for the thing. But we have been so conditioned that she knows how to find whatever it is that we're looking for that the first thing out of our mouths are mom or Sherry, I can't find fill in the blank. Can anybody relate to that? Yeah. Um, but, but, but there are these times, there are these times when legitimately no one in the house can find whatever it is that we're looking for. And, and if you get me at the, uh, at a certain moment in time, I'll lean into my frustration while Sherry will lean into the Lord and Sherry will say, Holy Spirit, will you help me find whatever it is? And can I tell you more times than not, we have looked 42 times in that same spot on the counter. And after Sherry prays, there the item is. Miracle of miracles. Wonder of wonders. God tends to move when we ask him to. He has the ability to move when we ask him to. We have a tendency, though, however, to want an explanation for everything that happens. We want a reason or an explanation for everything that happens. Can I tell you this this morning, church? No one truly understands the supernatural. No one truly understands the supernatural. Now, I believe that God might give a sliver of insight to some folks, but no one truly understands the supernatural. Now, some of you may have purchased books that proclaim to have the authority on supernatural activity and movement. Some of you may have listened to speakers on TV or teachers who have seemed to have the authority on the supernatural move of God. I'm gonna tell you, I am your pastor. I do not understand the supernatural. I have experienced the supernatural uh, move of God, but I don't understand the supernatural of God because I'm not God. I'm not God. And we have severely in Christian in Christian leadership, we have severely um, misrepresented the Lord when we don't know how to say, I don't know about things I don't know. You need to be under teachers who are able to say, I'm learning, I'm growing. I don't know what I don't no, I don't know what I don't know. If you see someone who claims to have the authority over the supernatural, run. Run. Because they're not God. They're not God. Now, the supernatural is fun. What detracts us to really like leaning into, ooh, what's going on? It's fun. It's infectious. 
It's contagious. At times it can be exotic. But here's the danger. Talking about God things that you don't really understand can oftentimes lead people further away from Christ than closer to him. So it's important that when we talk with authority, that we're talking about things that we actually know about, the things that we actually can be proven and backed by scripture, revelation from, from God. So we tend to want to have an explanation for everything that happens. And when we do, we try to chase down the reason and logic. And when we do that, we miss out on really the, the incredible, remarkable thing that's happening right in front of us, an opportunity to hear and see the Lord. There's a story in the book of John chapter nine. There is a man who is blind and Jesus is rolled up on the scene and he sees this blind man and the disciples say, hey, what, who sinned that this man would be uh, put in this condition? And Jesus said, no, this is for a moment where I can be glorified. And he takes the man and he takes mud and he puts it on the, the man's eyes and he spits on it and he tells him to go wash in, in the pool. And so the man does all of those things and he washes his eyes and now he can see. Anyone who is blind and now can see, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. And so Jesus performs this miracle and the Pharisees were just so excited about it. They were just, they were just jumping up and down for joy that he could see. No, the Pharisees, the ones who had the most knowledge about God, Okay, the ones who, who, who assumedly uh, uh, knew the most about God, had the closest relationship with God, were so concerned that Jesus would heal somebody on the Sabbath. This was a day that was supposed to be for rest. Who dare heal on the Sabbath? And so they called that man in. I'm gonna tell you right now, if you came in here and you were blind for years and you came in here seeing, I'm going to jump up and down, do some, some, some somersaults in the altar at the fact that you once were blind and now you see. These Pharisees looked right at the man. Who did this to you? Do you know that today is the Sabbath? And they ask him all of these questions. And this guy's like, look, look I, I, he's, like, he's like moments from like, I, I'm now seeing. And you know, and he answers them this way. He says, one thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. I once was blind, but now I see. Listen, I don't know the answers to your questions, but I can tell you that what I experienced is real. What I experienced is, is, is true. Those who are the most knowledgeable missed what was happening right in front of them. So guys, do miracles happen today? Do miracles happen today? We see miracles all throughout scripture and I would have to answer this with an emphatic yes. Why? Because I have experiences where God has moved in my life in a miraculous way and some of you do too. Well, some of you might be, I don't know about that. Eh, are miracles, let's all, let's all experience a miracle together, shall we? Here we go. I would like everyone to breathe in through your nose and breathe out. Miracle of miracles. Well, wait a minute, Kevin. There are some scientists who have gotten together and they talk about oxygen and how the body works. And that is not really a miracle. You know, it's so funny when somebody is close to stopping to breathe, we don't yell out to the scientists. We, we go and cry out to God. Miracle of miracles. There are miracles happening in front of you and in your life every moment of every day. There are supernatural things happening in front of you, but sometimes because we are looking for the extraordinary exotic things, we miss the things God's doing in the mundane and the regular. And when we miss the mundane and the regular, we miss out on our relationship capacity growing in the Lord. We miss out in leaning in and knowing the character and the very essence of God. Listen, I've had supernatural things happen in my life. When I was in third grade, I lived at an apartment complex and there was a, there was a kid that lived next to me and I so wanted him to go to church with me because I rode the church bus to church and I wanted him to go to church with me and and uh, he, his dad said, we're going fishing. Now, he didn't ever want to go to church with me. He thought that was weird. He didn't want to go on the church bus. But he, he, he stormed out of the house. I remember this day, it was raining outside and he was so mad that he couldn't go swimming, or, or sorry, fishing. And he said, he said, man, if your God is real, then you ask that God to, to, to make it stop raining so I can go fishing. And I thought, okay. 
Now, I was a little Baptist boy at the time, okay? I didn't know anything much about supernatural activity or the Holy Spirit, but boy, I sure did take that King James Bible outside and I, I was soaking wet and I held it up to the sky and I said, God, if you're real, make it stop raining right now. It did. The clouds moved and the sun came out. I was shocked as he was. I was like, that worked. Now, I mean, and he was, he was so, he was, so, but I remember that as a third grader, I remember God, God doing that. In the early 2000s, I got real sick. And, uh, and I remember missing three months of school. I was working at school, missing three months of work at school. I got real sick, lost a lot of weight and stuff. And when I went to the hospital, I won't name which hospital it was, but I went to a hospital and uh, I went in there and they gave me liver cancer diagnosis. Now, when somebody says cancer to you, that's a big word, right? Well, I was referred to another doctor at another hospital. And I went in there and they said, there's no liver cancer here. Now, was it a misdiagnosis or was it God? I'm going to choose God. I'm going to choose God, right? Miracle of miracles, okay? You all know this story. If you've been here for a little while, I was in a fatal, near fatal accident just in January this year. My car rolled over three times. I should be dead. But somehow, some reason, I'm standing vertically upright outside of my car unscathed with the police and the ambulance coming, yelling at me, don't move. Why are you here? The police officer wrote on the report, I don't know how this man is alive. I, I, miracle of miracles. God does move in the miraculous. Now, what we're reading in our scripture here today is we're talking about these apostles who are devoted to all of these things. And it says, everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. For many people, being filled with awe is where it stops. Unfortunately, being filled with awe is where it stops. Listen, miracles don't just happen to demonstrate God's power, but also to turn people's hearts to him. Miracles are about glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ, about glorifying the Lord, not glorifying us, God is not, I don't believe God is in the business of putting on a circus, putting on a show. God is in the business of being glorified. And sometimes he chooses to do that in miraculous ways. Now, I just told you about John chapter nine. I told you about what happened. I once was blind and now I see, but there's more to the story. This is what happens later. They kicked him out of the synagogue because they didn't like the answers the blind man now that could see gave. And so it says this, Jesus heard that they had put him out of the synagogue and finding him, he asked, do you believe in the son of man? He answered, who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, you have both seen him and he is the one who is talking with you. And the blind now man who can see said, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Any supernatural activity that God does in your life is to get you and others to a point to say, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. The miracle wasn't so much so that man could see from the physical. It's so that his eyes would be open in the spiritual. Miracles happen in order to bolster our faith, supernatural work of God happens so that our faith might be bolstered. Bolster. Over in Le uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse six, it says this, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Who in this room would say, I wanna be one who pleases the Lord? Anybody in this room, okay? I wanna be one who pleases the Lord. Guys, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So let me ask you a question. Because there are people in here who have prayed for miracles and supernatural move of God and God did not move and give you a yes answer. Let me ask you this question. Who has greater faith? The one who prayed for a miracle and got their answer or the one who prayed for an, a miracle didn't get an answer but still believes in a sovereign God? Who has greater faith? When Thomas joined the rest of the friends after Jesus's resurrection. All of the friends had the privilege of seeing Jesus and seeing the, the nails 
pierced from his hands, the holes in, the, in his side. And, and Thomas said, I'm not going to believe it unless I touch it and I, and I feel it. And Jesus, in his infinite grace, appears to Thomas and allows Thomas to touch his hands and touch his side. And you know what Jesus says? Blessed is the one who did not see, but still believes. Blessed is the one who did not see, but still believes. Guys, I've got some, some good news. If you're a believer in this house, I've got some good news for you. The cicadas are gonna die. And so are you. And so are you. Aren't you glad you came to church this morning? Supernatural activity is to put us in a place where our faith is bolstered, guys, because let me tell you, if you are a believer, you understand that our life does not stop at the grave here on the planet. We have an eternity ahead of us. And so there are going to be moments, th there are moments in time where you are praying and you are believing and you are travailing for a miraculous move of God and he does not answer you because the picture of our lives is so much grander than just the day you were born and the day you leave this earth physically. There is so much more to the story. In fact, I would even argue for Kevin O'Day, my life even got started yet. I've got so much ahead of me in terms of eternity. There's gonna, the, the Bible tells us that there is a, in Hebrews 9, there's an appointed time for every person to die. So let me tell you, there's gonna come a point where no matter how much you pray, no matter how much you lay hands, no matter how much you travail, the answer's going to be no. And when the answer is no, it doesn't take anything away from God and his sovereignty and his goodness. Because the greatest miracle is that God has raised you from death to life. He has raised you because of the blood of Jesus Christ. You have been raised from death to life. This is what Ephesians 2 says. You were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. But I love this next word, but... But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. Guys, the greatest miracle is that God has raised you from death to life. Anything that's dead that comes back to life, that's a miracle. That is a miracle. And it is the greatest miracle that has happened to you. So when we are asking him to move, on our behalf for a mirror in, in a miraculous way, when we are believing him for a, a supernatural move, listen to this, we tend to have the propensity to put our relationship with him in the balance. We have the propensity, when we're asking God, I need you to move in this miraculous way, we have the propensity to say, but if you don't, then our relationship is gonna suffer. If you don't answer this prayer, God, the way that I want, the way that I've been sowing in the prayer, if you don't answer it the way that I believe the outcome should come, God, then our relationship is going to suffer. But I wanna tell you that this God, no matter how we approach him, he is steadfast and true. He never changes. Yesterday, today, tomorrow, forevermore, he will always be the same. And he is sovereign and he is good. Why is it then that we put the, our relationship, or I'll even go a step further. Some of us will even put the reality of his existence in the balance of whether or not he answers us favor, favorably when we ask him for something. And then he doesn't come through and you see people turning away from God, turning away from the church, turning away from other believers. Why is that? Why? Well, I think I have an answer. So many of us are so content with a shot glass relationship with the Lord. This shot glass is just good. I come in on Sunday, I engage in worship, I, I hug some people's necks, I fake smile, and it fills my shot glass for a moment. And the minute you get out there in the world, three seconds, one hour, two hours, that shot glass, empty. And now you got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday of a bunch of crap happening in your life so that you can come back on church yeah. Sunday morning to get your shot glass filled. And while you think your life looks like this because of the shot glass, your life actually looks like this right here. It's a mess. 
It's cloudy. It's dirty. And it might not just be sin, though sin is a part of it. It could be anxiety, fear, pain, discouragement, unbelief, a bunch of stuff, life happening. And you turn to all of the vices and you turn to the world because your life looks like this, but you'll sure be back here on Sunday morning to get your shot, to smile along and go back to it. And God is up here and he has so much more. He's like, I've got so much more. If I started to pour this in here, just I've got so much more for you. Here's the thing. We've got to stop placing gallon size expectations on God with a shot glass relationship. He has so much more for us than that. He has so much to pour into you, to say about you, to render truth to you about his reality. Now, I'm gonna say there may be somebody here and you've got a shot glass relationship with the Lord and you've been walking in shame and doubt and fear and probably what you're walking in is insecurity because you're thinking, Kevin, you, <laughs> the Lord has no idea what I've done. I can't do more than a shot glass because he will never accept me. Let me tell you about the grace and the mercy of God. Even with a shot glass, God can come in and do miraculous things. He knows how to clean up. Even with a shot glass, he knows how to come in and clean it up and clear things up. Even with shot glass mentality, even with a shot glass rela relationship, the miracles God does in our lives, he can move and he'll prove himself strong every single time. He'll get in and start to do work, even at shot glass level. That's the God that we serve. He's so good. He is a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And if you will just insert that shot glass into your life, he'll do a mighty work. But here's the thing. Even though he may have cleaned up one area because you came on a special Sunday where there was a special topic and you were, and you were convicted and you came down, you still got all these areas of your life to contend with. And so here's what happens is you've got this and you go back home and instead of looking with clarity at what God has do, done, you look at your life and you see it through this awful, cloudy, dirty, mucky lens. And you're attracted to go back to those vices because it, God wasn't enough. And let me tell you something. It wasn't that God wasn't enough. It's that your capacity was too small to receive everything he had for you. Everything that he had for you. See, God wants more than a shot glass relationship with you. He wants to fill you to overflowing. He wants to get all corners of your heart, every sector of your life. He wants to come in and he wants to do a mighty work and he wants to clean it out. And he'll pour into your life till everything is just so clear. All of it's out of the way. The discouragement that you've been, that been feeling, he wants to encourage you. That disappointment, he wants to come in and tell you the truth about the lies that you've been buying into. And all of a sudden your life begins to look clear and overflowing to the top with abundance. And Jesus, he comes in and he does this work. This Holy Spirit comes. And then you get to this place because your capacity has grown. And all of a sudden you go, well, is there no more, uh, is there no more God? Is there, is God, does God run out? No, when your capacity for him grows, his capacity to give grows too. And so let me tell you something. He will continue to pour into you wh whatever capacity you have. He'll pour into you overflowing every single time. And here's the thing. This is my point. There are so many of us that will allow our, we will live years in discouragement and in denial of the existence of God because he didn't answer one specific prayer. He didn't move miraculously in one specific way. And we will ride on that instead of having the capacity to know him in a, in a big way in the mundane, ordinary miracles that happen every single day. See, this takes relationship and grit Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And when you lean into this God and you realize how big he is, how really is in the mundane. I can't find my remote. God, I don't, I don't have joy today. I need peace. God, I need you to walk. I need you to walk. I don't like this person today. I need you to help me to like them, to love them. I don't want to, I want to punch them in the face, but I'm not going to. All of those things, you start to allow the Holy Spirit to work. You see miraculous things happening in the ordinary moments. And all of a sudden when the big thing happens and you need a big move from God, his sovereignty is never in question. His sovereignty is never in question because you know him so well. You know him so well. Do you believe that when Daniel went into the fire, do you think Daniel was sitting there thinking as he's going in, God's gonna be in there and I'm not gonna be eaten? No, that's not what he thought. He was thrown into the lion's den because he made a decision to obey God. And he said, guess what? My death doesn't matter because I'm gonna go be with the Lord. 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do you think they had foreknowledge that Jesus was gonna be in the fire? No, they said, hey, I can't bow down to this idol. I've got to go into the fire. Guess what? My life is over because he is greater than anything that's happening here on earth. Guys, do you have the amount of faith it takes? Do you have the faith it takes to stand up and say, I'll go into that lion's den and I'm trusting God. And even if he says no, whatever outcome is better for me. If Daniel would have died in that lion's den, he would have been with the Lord and his life was spared. He was, he was okay. Both were good, right? With God, it always ends up good. With God, it always ends up on the side where it's for your good. Amen? That's something to be excited about. And so when we have faith, when we have the capacity to believe him day by day in the ordinary things, then even when he says no, he is still God and he's still good. He is still God and he's still good. Worship team, you can come back. I've told this story before, but it fits today, so I'm gonna tell it again. When Sherry was having our oldest daughter, Hadassah, it's coming on 12 years ago. We were in the hospital. It was such a joyful moment. Having babies is a miracle. It's a miracle. And she was, um, she was in labor and she labored hard for over 30 hours and felt every bit of it. And uh, we, were in the, we were in the hospital room and uh, it was time for Hadassah to come. And so Hadassah comes out and there's no greater joy for a dad than to hear that first cry come out of that baby's mouth. And so I heard it also cry for the first time and we had a friend there who was helping us and she cut the umbilical cord and handed me Hadassah. And um, I just looked at Hadassah and I thought to myself, what a miracle, what an amazing miracle. And I was instantly in love, instantly in love. A few moments later, I see the nurses over by Sherry and Sherry is bleeding profusely. She, she just is losing tons of blood. And so as I'm rocking my new baby, emotions begin to shift a little bit. I'm, I'm so excited to be holding this miracle in front of me, but I'm also starting to fear a little bit of what's happening to my wife. And then the alarms went off. And when the alarms went off, a bunch of doctors poured into the room and my friend took the baby and there were so many people in the room that I was pushed up against the ledge and the window. And in that moment, I remember, I will never forget hearing that doctor say, I don't think she's going to make it. And I'm leaned up against that window. And in that moment, all I can bring myself to say is, God, you're sovereign. God, you're sovereign. God, you're sovereign. I couldn't say anything else. It was just, God, you're sovereign. God, you're sovereign. God, you're sovereign. And I am so grateful that my wife is here today. I'm so thankful that the Lord chose to heal her, but I need you to know that if he had chosen to take her home that day, God was still sovereign and he's still good. And the reason I can proclaim that no matter what is because I've got a relationship that's more than a shot glass. I have seen him prove himself over and over and over again true. I cannot deny the existence of God. I might not like everything he chooses to do, but I'm not gonna ignore that he is real and that he's alive today and that my eternity waits for me. I believe that and I have faith to believe that he knows what's best. Even when I don't understand it, he knows what's best and he knows what's best for you too. So this morning, you may be believing God for something supernatural. There's precedent scripturally for you to get and continue to grit in that prayer. Continue to sow in that prayer. Continue to believe because he does move miraculously. But there also may be people here that you have been believing God for a long time for something to happen. And it seems as if his answer is no. And you're struggling with doubt. You're struggling. Am I, do I have faith enough? Am I, am I praying the right way? All of these questions. Can I, just, can I just encourage you this morning? I want you to come and allow somebody to agree with you, to pray with you this morning, to go before the, in Hebrews, it says, because of the blood of Jesus Christ, we can go boldly and confidently to the throne room in our time of need. You need to be encouraged to know that God has not forgotten about you. 
He sees you, he knows you, he's with you. Some of you have turned off the conversation portal. You've, you've just stopped talking to him altogether because you're angry. God wants you to, he wants to address that anger. He wants to address the bitterness. He wants to address the pain. And he wants to remind you that he's still God and he's still good. So would you stand with me this morning? Would all the prayer warriors come down? And uh, I believe that God wants to do a mighty work this morning in this place, if you let him. I'm believing God for supernatural intervention, come. If you're believing for salvations for somebody, come. That's the biggest miracle. If you're believing God for some medical change, come. Let's pray, let's lay hands on you. If you just need to reconnect with your creator, for whatever reason, you come today and let the Lord minister. We're gonna do Waymaker.